captain. Well, we're going to get into Yeah, I'll take care of that. All right. We're going to get into a little post spawn. I'm going to talk about what they do after wintering in the winter. We're going to go into the whole process of what a flatheads are doing. And um so here's what happens. Flathead catfish, like I said again, winter in Minnesota in the upper Midwest, they winter torpor. It's a state it's a state of hibernation but they're not actually hibernating. They don't need hibernate, but they do not need to feed. That's what's cool about flatheads is they can do that. Uh, like our koi fish. So we have koi fish at my parents' house. They don't. We don't feed them in a plastic container for seven and a half months. Yeah. They yeah. just sit in there dormant, dormant yeah. and they're perfectly fine at the end of seven and a half months. And my parents are way up north, and they have them in a pond outside. So they just literally sit in the tub in my garage with a bubbler and a water heater just to keep it warm enough where it won't freeze. Correct. Yep. They'll just chill all winter. No food. My parents won't feed them. And they've been there four years now, so I mean, yeah. obviously. And flatheads do the same thing. People always say they need to feed, they need to feed, they don't. So we can get into the whole wintering thing with flatheads. They do not need to feed. Flatheads don't need to feed in sub-40 degree water. Sub-40 degree water. Flatheads will start to feed. Tank proven. Um, they did a juvenile study on flatheads for uh, um, for feeding. And they found below 40 degrees, none of them ate. And obviously there's going to be exceptions where once in a while one will grab some. But they don't have to eat. That's the whole main point. And uh, once they get out of winter and the water starts warming up, they'll start moving. Sometimes they'll go a long ways to their wintering hole to go back to their spot where they spawn. And in pre-spawn, I always preach fish fish seams, fish seams, fish seams. Yes. Because they're moving. Fish are moving. And uh, who are you inviting? No, you're talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and uh, so... I should have warned you. <laughs> flatheads... Um, once they come out, out of their wintering hole, they'll hang around for a little bit, I would assume. But they end up moving, and they'll go through locks. They run miles and miles, like 10, 20, 30, 40 miles sometimes every year. And they'll go back to the same spot every single year. You can catch the same fish in the same general area every year in some certain some circumstances. So what they're doing is they're coming out of their wintering hole. Water's warming up. They're moving. They're going back to where they're feeding. They're out there eating because they hadn't eaten all winter. They're feeding running lanes. So when you find, that's why I would say fish seams pre-spawn because you can never go wrong fishing a seam in pre-spawn. Um, for instance, me and Kimball fish seams two leagues ago. Yeah, We should have had 12 flatheads that night. We ended up catching seven, seven. which is a great night yeah. when we won league. Yeah, um, It was a good good night yeah, of fishing. And, and type of big cat. Yeah. And that big cat was on cut bait on a seam too, which is interesting. And um, uh, once they pre-spawn and they start going into spawn they're going to find their spot we're going to they're going to either going to burrow in the side of the river on the side of a creek uh they dig a hole that's where they get scarred up they're rubbing up on the where they're they either find a log empty log could be anything honestly whatever they can get into to lay eggs the female's going to lay the eggs the male's guarding the eggs that's how it works for the flathead the male sits on the eggs if he guards them from the female and he guards them from other fish coming to eat the eggs and the fry so that's what they do once spawn is over, it's a different kind of fishing. You can still catch flatheads on on seams. You can still catch them by creek mouths. But I always say when you're looking for summer flatheads, post-spawn, towards the beginning of the night, into the night, fish log wood. Wood that goes to the bottom of the river. The biggest, thickest, dirtiest wood you can find. I like something with structure. If I see a tree floating on top of the river, people are like, oh, I'm going to fish this tree. Well, does it go to the bottom of the river? Because I don't really give a crap if it doesn't go to the bottom. Yeah, if it's yeah but repeat that. Yeah, drive so, by. yeah. Yeah, yeah because. By, right? Yeah, I, I'm sides. So I'm, uh, this, I talked to this about Dan the other week because this is yeah. when I'm using my side image. I'm scanning. I'm sitting about 50 feet off the bank, and I'm running with my motor, and I'm side scanning, finding wood that goes all the way to the bottom, something with mass, something old. The older bigger wood the better because it probably has the biggest flathead in that whole area for the most part um obviously um there's been a guest on catfish weekly that talked about this when you you feel like the bites kind of died off it didn't die off because they're feeding all night you just got to change your position and fish something different like a shallow flat or a creek mouth or something because those those catfish come out of the wood as a predator to eat your bait yeah. that's why i would say get the if you're not losing tackle the first time you fish a spot you're probably not close enough because you got to entice them out. Their sensory organs, their chemoreceptors are crazy. They smell the water and they can see, sense vibration more than any fish in the river system. Um, it's just a crazy amount. Their whole bodies, 
technically pretty much a taste bud as the chemoreceptors cover their entire body, mostly condensed in the face and the barbels. But um, so they sense the vibration. They sense that. So you got to get them to come out of that wood. And then once you're like, man, this spot died, well, go try another log jam or go try a creek or go try a, the edge of a sandbar or something. And you probably find more feeding fish because they don't really stop feeding. The fish are out there eating at night. That's what they're doing. Those flatheads are ambush. They're apex predators here in the river. So um, the oldest, biggest wood, and I think Dan would agree, when you find something that looks like it goes down there and it's got some mass to it, I mean, sometimes you get a feeling on a piece of wood that it's going to hold a big fish, and it usually does, or a fish in general. And sometimes you get like three little ones out of one tree, and you're like, well, there's probably not a big one here. Yeah. I think they're pretty, uh, um, I don't know what the word is. I don't think the big ones really like to hang around with the little ones in a, a structure. I think they kind of own the structure is how I feel it would be. Because yeah. I feel like a big flathead would eat a small flathead. I'm almost positive they will. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. they eat bullets and walleye and sheephead. So. How many videos do you see on YouTube where there's you know, two flatheads you know, up, up in the surface of the water and one right. is trying to eat one half its size? Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Hopefully you guys learned something or enjoyed it nonetheless. But... If you guys want to watch more podcasts, make sure you guys tune into our podcast every Wednesday. Uh, Old Carver Fishing Podcast on YouTube and on Facebook. So, thank you guys for tuning in. If you did enjoy it, please hit subscribe, like the video, and we will see you on the next one. Fish on.